Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park, and uh, today's video we're going to be bringing you is about naval terminology, all right, and its use in the vernacular or common everyday language. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about the origins of some of these phrases that we'll all recognize, uh, and I hope you find the video informative and kind of fun. For some of the phrases, we're going to be actually going to some spots on the ship where they're related to. Uh, and sometimes I'll just be talking to you here from the Admiral's Quarters on USS Little Rock. Right, so uh, hope you enjoy the video, and we'll see you around. All right, so for our first word, we're standing here on uh, the forecastle or near the forecastle on USS Little Rock, and we're going to be talking about the phrase bitter end. So here's, here's some bits. All right, that's what are called bits, where for the mooring lines, and there's also usually some bits on the pier. And there is the bitter end. All right, so the phrase usually means uh, taking something right to uh, fruition, uh, even against all odds. And that term comes from the end of the line, which would have been the most important uh, part of the line, obviously, to keep a ship moored uh, to a pier or a promenade. And so the term bitter end comes from uh, this line right here, right, being the most important, and you're taking it all the way to the end of the line. Now here in my office, we are looking at a portal. Funny thing is, though, this is on the starboard side of the ship. So many times we get questions uh, saying, well, why aren't portals on the starboard side called starboard holes? Well, the term portal actually comes from the French word uh, la porte, meaning door. And back in the 1400s, uh, cannons were right on the forecastle and the fantail and right on the main deck of uh, sea-going vessels uh, in the age of sail. All right, as technological and manufacturing uh, technology grew, the cannons became bigger and bigger and it just was not practical to keep them on the main decks anymore with uh, the crew and the officers uh, harrying around all the place. So what uh, the French did was they created another deck for the cannons. Now the problem is, is how are you going to fire the cannons through the hull? So a port was created, la porte, a door, a door hole, where the cannon could be let out and fired free from uh, hitting its own hitting the own, its own vessel. All right, so that's where the term portal comes from. All right, and it's, so it's not starboard or port, meaning the location of yourself on the ship, uh, but it actually comes from the French term uh, la porte, meaning door. Well, here I am in the sick bay of USS Little Rock. So what does that mean? Uh, back again in the age of sail, uh, the sick bay was one or two decks below the captain's quarters, all right, and that was at the stern of the ship. Now, even today, uh, from sailing vessels and wind-powered vessels to uh, steel and aluminum vessels today, the stern is rounded, all right? So back in the age of sail, people would say that looked like a bay. All right, so you are convalescing in a bay, hence the term sick bay. All right, ours, our sick bay is kind of forward on the USS Little Rock, uh, so she's not at the stern of the ship. But of course, that rounded uh, stern resembles a bay along a waterfront or a beach. Well, the water fountain, that is kind of what is known as a scuttlebutt. All right, now the term scuttlebutt, which is used today to mean gossip uh, or rumor, was uh, really the combination of two different terms. All right, the term scuttle and the term butt. All right, so modern day drinking fountains do have a uh, history uh, because a butt back in the age of sail, was a cask or a, a vessel that distributed fresh water to the crew. So like a water fountain today, people would gather around 
and uh, drink water. The term scuttle, uh, back in the olden days, in the age of sail, meant a hole in the hull that could sink a ship. Putting together the term butt, which is a place where people gather to have fresh water, the scuttle, uh, which is a hole in the hull that could sink a ship, is otherwise known as a rumor or gossip, which could also, in its own way, sink a ship. Right, so you put the two terms together, it's a place where people gather to exchange gossip, gossip and rumors, and it could sink a ship. All right, in front of you, you'll see our ensign for USS the Sullivan. Well, the term ensign was right from the medieval days, uh, and when armies and kings would go into battle, they would have squires that would carry the ensign flag. All right, eventually, over time, these squires were uh, referred to as ensigns. And so they were just kind of above the uh, raging mob, so to speak, but they weren't at the level of lords and kings. All right, so the term ensign has two meanings today. Uh, uh, the junior most officers uh, coming out of school uh, and an ensign flag. So ships still carry a flag into battle, still called an ensign, while it also tr transferred over to an officer and the junior most officers uh, coming out of school. All right, everyone, did you see that? That's a seagull. That is our next term. All right, if you can figure it out. Uh, so back in the days of sail, there would be uh, obviously gulls and uh, other aviary, I guess I would call it, uh, that would hang around a ship and the sailors would throw junk, flotsam, jetsam, all of that stuff up to the gulls and they would think that it was food and they would eat it. All right, so the term gullible comes from this practice of sailors feeding any sorts of material to, uh, to seagulls and they think that it's food. So the term gullible is you'll believe anything. That was pretty fun, wasn't it? Now we're standing in the ward room. All right, so this is where the officers would eat. And actually this off season, we were having it repainted in that lovely harbor mist. So it's a little less put together than it will be during the season as of right now, but... So where does the term ward room come from? Right in the age of sail, the age of piracy and booty, the wardrobe would be the place where the spoils of war or a battle or a conquering of a ship or taking over a ship. This is where the spoils would come, to the wardrobe. Occasionally, the officers uh, uh, during the Age of Sail would gather there uh, to have a drink, maybe to take a little treasure. And, and then eventually, when it, this Age of Sail, the Age of Piracy ended, the wardrobe turned into the ward room. And it was a place for the officers to gather and uh, eat and socialize. Here's an example of a logbook. This is from uh, the forward engine room uh, of USS The Sullivans from 1962 to 1965. Where does the term logbook come from? Uh, the first records on a seagoing vessel in the age of sail uh, were to record the speed of the vessel. Now, how did they do that? They used an instrument called a chip log that they would toss overboard. They would have a line with knots and then they would record the chip log would land in the water and stay stationary because it was tied with lead. And as the ship moved away, they would roll out the line and then they would count the knots. All right, so that's another term. Where does that term come from? They would count the knots on the line as they were going away uh, for a certain amount of time. So the first recorded records on a ship were called chip logs, right, based on the instrument that was used that was tossed in the water. And then that eventually became a log book. Cool, isn't it? All right, everyone, well, we're back in the semi-toasty Admiral's Quarters of Little Rock 
and going to be carrying on with our naval terminology. Right, so the first one is the peacoat. Right, where does a peacoat come from? In an odd sort of way, we don't have a peacoat here in our collections, though we do have a lot of fall weather jackets and fair weather jackets from World War II, uh, Korea, and beyond. Right, so the peacoat was originally made of something called pilot cloth. Right, so you see where this is going, uh, which was uh, thick and coarse and heavy and could be layered differently on the outside of the coat than on the inside. Right, so uh, the term pea coat comes from pilot cloth, and it was originally earlier after its invention was called a pea jacket, and it moved to a pea coat. Now I just mentioned the word carry on or the phrase carry on. Uh, that is our next term. All right, so in the age of sail, it was really important to be ready for any sort of wind and any sort of breeze that would be able to keep um, your forward momentum and moving you potentially out of harm's way. And the officers wanted every inch of canvas to be ready and to be carried by the yard arms and the masts. So to carry on means, you know, stop the, uh, get back to work, resume work, pardon the interruption. And this comes from the term that the officers wanted all of the sails ready for every inch that the yards and the masts could carry so they could be ready to exit a potential hostile situation. The next term is devil to pay. All right, maybe we know it today as hell to pay, but it usually means an action is taken and down the road there'll be some sort of foreboding uh, response or consequence. All right, so devil to pay comes from two different terms, uh, devil, and again, in the age of sail, uh, that the devil was the longest seam on the ship, which, if that cracked or broke, would bring on the most amount of water. All right, so a sailor would be assigned the unenviable task of paying the devil, and that means recalking her and checking her out, monitoring uh, that particular devil seam, to make sure that it was still watertight. Obviously, anyone on board would probably not want that job. And so the term devil to pay comes from the seam and paying, which means refilling it and recocking it. Took the wind out of their sails. All right, that's a pretty famous term. Uh, so when two ships were engaged in battle, uh, if one could get to the windward side of the ship, they would take the wind out of the enemy's sails, literally, stop the enemy vessel in its tracks, and then therefore be able to bombard her with, arm, with, uh, with shells and cannon shot. Right, so you always wanted to try and get that advantage of getting to the windward side, which means you would capture their water, uh, their air, and stop them in their tracks. All right, so taking the wind out of their sails today means, right, you've won an argument, the other side has nothing to respond with, and that's where it comes from. Uh, I hate to say for our next term, fathom, uh, I'm not up on my Anglo-Saxon Anglo pronunciations, but it comes from the Anglo-Saxon word uh, fatum, or fatum. Anyone knows that, please feel free to share how to, the pronunciation of that. And that, what that meant was to embrace arms, right? It's like the Viking hug, you embrace each other's arms, all right? And many years ago, 1,100 to 800, 500 years ago, a lot of measurements were taken with body parts, either, you know, a hand, a foot, and we still use those measurements today, or two parts on the, or two uh, locations on the body and the distance between them. All right, so if an average male outstretches his arms, it's usually about six feet, using the term embracing arms and the Anglo-Saxon fathom, we turn into fathom, all right? And we now know it today is socially distance. Minding your P's and Q's. All right, this is a pretty cool one. All right, and it's one my stepdad would always tell me when I was younger and I was going out. So minding your P's and Q's, uh, is minding your pints and quarts. 
So when sailors would come back from a cruise, uh, whether they, it was, you know, they were a maritime vessel uh, or a capital vessel, a war vessel, uh, when they came back, a lot of times they would go right to the bars or the dives, but maybe they weren't paid yet. So the bar keeps would have a running tabulation of how many pints and how many quarts they drank, and then when they did get paid, they would have to pay the bartender. All right, so minding your P's and Q's means keeping track of how much you drink. But it comes from a very old term uh, of the barkeepers. Now the term Yankee. <laughs> well, we're all known as Yankees today, uh, and I think there's a baseball team in New York City. Right, but where does that term come from? All right, it might be apocryphal, it might be scuttlebutt, right? but back in uh, the Americas, right after the American Revolution and our first decades as a country, uh, when our sails, uh, when our ships would go out uh, and we negotiated and did trading with other countries, uh, the Dutch called many of our captains Yankers because we were a little on the frugal side. All right, at that point, we didn't have many resources. We didn't have a lot of financial backing. All right, so we were probably, our merchant vessels were known as kind of a little stingier when discussing trade and negoti negotiating between our two countries. So the Dutch started to call us Yankers, and if we carry that through today, that turns into Yankees. All right, and the last term today is bamboozle. All right, if we're familiar with that, that means pulling the wool over someone's eyes. And that comes directly, again, from in, uh, military uh, and battle engagements when uh, a ship would run colors uh, that weren't really their own. All right, so they're creating the element of surprise. This was done pretty well in the movie Master and Commander with uh, Russell Crowe, all right? Obviously the HMS surprise. <laughs> and uh, so to bamboozle in the age of sail was to mean you're showing colors uh, that aren't your own to have the element of surprise against an enemy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to uh, like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Buffalo uh, Naval Park. And uh, we'd love to have your support. And thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the video.